Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the case that we put together for the BLE Vibration Bracelet. So let's take a look at it in CAD. I wanna do a quick little demo just to show you uh, how we have it working here. So of course, I wanna show you guys how it's driven with user parameters, right? So the first thing I wanna do is change the width of the case and see how it affects our design. So if we take a look at our design, it is a two-piece enclosure. We got a cover, we got a box, and then we have these two wristbands on the side. So if I change our case width from, let's say, 54 millimeters, let's make it something really big like 100. Fusion is going to calculate all the things in the timeline and adjust all of the separate components and bodies that are, uh, that are used in this design. So you can see here it is really stretched out now. And if we remove the cover, we can get a good look at the stuff inside. So there's a lot of spacing now in between the components. So let's go ahead and bring this back to uh, 54 millimeters uh, for the width. So Fusion, again, is gonna calculate all the stuff and compress everything back together. So there's a lot of features that are in this design that are able to adjust when we change this one user parameter. That's really, really cool. So let's take a look at how we are driving this. So I'm gonna step back into my timeline and go all the way back and we'll start to see uh, how we put this together. So since this has about five different uh, components, I created an electronics uh, uh, component. I named it electronics. And that way I can start stuffing everything into that component, uh, namely these five, component, uh, these five electronic pieces here. That way that I can just, instead of having to turn off each individual uh, component, I can just turn off this main component and that's how I've grouped it. So I think for, uh, for uh, management, uh, managing uh, um, components, it's a really smart thing to do, really helpful thing to do. The next thing I do is I create a case. I, I create another component. I give it the name of case. And then from within there, I create a box and a cover. That way I can turn off the whole case if I have something else that's tied to it. Um, I don't have to worry about having all of these uh, components that are not uh, grouped already. So that's really uh, helpful. The next thing is I create one sketch inside of the box. And this sketch, this is what we're going to focus on today. Um, what's interesting about this sketch is that it doesn't look too complicated. It's mainly a rectangle with a few shapes inside of it. So let's jump into it, double click on it to edit. And then we can see all the different uh, uh, dimensions and things that are tied to it. So I'm going to turn off the electronics just to focus on all the different things. So really, it is just one square. It is centered with uh, the origin of, of this plane. That way, whenever we want to create uh, a mirror of something over here, it's symmetrical. So we can just use the origin planes that are already uh, associated uh, to, to the design. So that's really, really easy. Uh, you'll notice that I have like uh, a couple of rectangles here that have some sketches. Let's focus on this really big one here. So this really big one here, uh, it has a, a width and a height. And this is basically going to be where we tie our LiPo battery to. So what I have here is I just have a regular uh, a rectangle. And then I have these two um, uh, sketch dimensions that's telling me I want this edge to be one millimeter away from this edge. And then I do that again, but for this edge over here on the top. That way, um, no matter how uh, our, our width changes, it'll always be one millimeter away from the top and one, mil um, one millimeter away from the right wall of our enclosure, because that's how we're kind of doing it. Uh, and so that's how that's working. Pretty simple. There's nothing else uh, tied to that, just those two sketch dimensions. Um, down here in this rectangle, this is actually going to be our slide switch. So this one has the width of 12 and has the height of 6. And then it has uh, a little bit of a distance. So basically, this sketch dimension is saying, I want five millimeters to be, uh, I want this edge to be five millimeters away from that edge. So if our width ever changes, our slide switch will always be five millimeters away from the wall on the left. So that's how that's working. And then if we look really close to here, we have a collinear constraint, this guy here, this guy here, this is the collinear. And basically, what that's doing is it's saying, I want this edge to always be next to this edge, basically touching each other. Uh, and because of the way the slide switch has to be right up against the wall of the enclosure, um, that's, really, uh, that's really a good way to do that is with a collinear constraint. And that's really it there. 
uh, this circle here is actually um, what's going to drive the position of our vibration motor. Our vibration motor is just a circular disc and well, we created a circle so that we can uh, use a joint to tie it to there. Um, we have an offset here so that we can extrude a little bit of a thing. And then we have this little, uh, this cutout here. So that way we can uh, just select this area and extrude that and then pop in uh, our vibration motor. So a little bit of extra shapes there, but it's all kind of uh, constrained to this circle. Okay, another thing is we have a circle on this side over here. And this one circle is what's going to tell where uh, our motor controller where to be. So with this, I just have a, uh, a fixed diameter and uh, two sketch constraints. So I basically have, I want uh, this circle to be 2.7 millimeters away from that wall. And I want uh, this uh, circle to be uh, 11 millimeters away from the wall down here. And then, so that's our motor control. And then we have one more PCB and that's the Adafruit Feather. And that one is, is, is uh, where this circle comes into play. So this circle is very similar. It has a three millimeter diameter and it has a sketch dimension saying, I want, uh, I want this circle to be 2.7 millimeters away. So you got that one uh, from, from this wall. And then I want three millimeters of distance from the circle from that wall. So that's really all uh, we have going on here. We have a rectangle <laughs> that's, our, that's gonna be the main case. And then we have these shapes that are inside of that rectangle. The rectangle on the outside, this, this, this highlight here, this is just an offset. So this offset here is a, is a, a negative value and then our use of parameter thickness. So if I ever wanna change our thickness, that's gonna change up here too. So if I change this thickness from uh, 1.5 to let's say three, you'll see that nothing on the inside has been, uh, has been affected. Our, our slide switch is still in the same spot. So I'll switch this back to 1.5 so you can see that um, anything that has that uh, will update as well. So that's really a uh, nice way to drive that. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish sketch and then start stepping through this. So I have my electronics, they're laid out like that. And then as a, now that I have my sketch uh, finished, I can start stepping through and seeing how the joints are being associated to, uh, to the components. So the first thing I do is I, uh, I've, I've created a joint uh, and I've basically said I want this mounting hole to, to be uh, centered with this circle here in this sketch. So you can actually uh, use individual shapes inside of one sketch to drive these joints. That's what's going on here. So if I double click on that, on that joint, you can see here that I don't really have that many offsets. I only have an offset on the Z axis and that gives me a little bit of elevation. So I have some distance uh, between uh, the bottom of the enclosure and the bottom of the PCB. So that's why I have an offset there. Cool. Uh, as I step through this, you're gonna see now I have assigned a joint to the uh, motor uh, controller here, this little PCB breakout. And uh, same thing, we, we pick one of these circles, uh, one of these mounting holes from the PCB and say, I want a joint. So I want uh, that bottom to be tied to that bottom. And you see there's a little bit of elevation there too. If I double click on that joint, you can see, uh, yep, I have a 0.5 millimeter offset. And you can, you can use um, user parameters in here too. If I wanted this to be thickness, I can say I want that to be the thickness uh, of the offset. And this angle here is negative 90. Uh, just to give me that's the actual orientation I want so you can add these offsets uh, in the joint alignment um, Box here. So I had it at negative 90 I believe and that's how I have that there Excellent. So now I have those two. Uh, I have uh, three more to go. So the next one is the battery One thing I need to look at is uh, if you double tap uh, or double click on this you can uh, see where uh, the the snap origin is the snap point uh, for this particular uh, one, I have it here and the center point of this edge here on the bottom of the LiPo battery. And then uh, if I go to the next snap joint, it's pretty much the same spot. It's the center point of that edge. So it's, it's you know, trying to be pretty consistent there. So um, it also has this flip uh, alignment. You could always flip things. For whatever reason, it didn't look good. So I flipped it and uh, that way it looks in the correct orientation. So you can always use that flip button if uh, things aren't uh, looking correct. 
And then the next thing I have, the last, th or next to the last, and then second to the last, is the slide switch, or maybe it's the motor. Yeah, it was the slide switch. So uh, pretty similar stuff. If I double click on it, you can see uh, where my snap origin is. Uh, for the slide switch, I just picked this center of this edge here. And then uh, if we look at the next snap point, it's pretty much the center of the edge there um, on that sketch, on that profile. So that's how that, that's working. And then uh, for the last joint we have here is uh, our, our motor, our actual vibration motor. And that one is just tied here uh, to the center circle there. Uh, so if you look at our snap uh, joints, you're just looking at the center of that and then the center of that circle there. So that's how that's being tied there. There is a flip associated to it. So if I don't have that flip, it looks like that. If I turn on the flip, uh, you can see that it's in the right orientation, or at least the expected orientation that we want. And we can further add more angles and offsets to the X, Y, and Z, but in this case, we didn't have to. Uh, so that's how that's working. So now that that's all tied up, uh, so now that all those joints are, uh, are joined up, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, and change the case width again. Let's go to 80, and you can see here that Fusion is, it's just happening instantly because there aren't any extrusions. There's nothing really... Uh, other than the sketch in the joints. That's why it's able to do this instantaneously because there's not all these crazy features yet. Normally what I would do is I would flesh out my enclosure and then apply the joints to particular um, edges that are a part of a solid body. Now you're probably wondering, why don't you just do it that way? Well, here is why. Here's the power of, uh, of doing this. So I'm gonna go, well, let's go ahead and change our, uh, our case width back to 54 so we can kind of see how it really is. And then I'm gonna step all the way to the, uh, to the front. So while I was designing this, I really needed to be able to fine tune the positions of all the components, but be able to see them all at the same time. So with the sketch open, you can actually, hate, you can actually say right click on your sketch and then say show dimensions. So now I no longer have to double click on that uh, that sketch because when I do, Fusion essentially brings me all the way back in time to when I first originally created it and now I can't see my design because it's in the future, it's at the end of the timeline. So I'll hit finish sketch and by doing right click show dimensions, you're essentially able to edit stuff from the past but stay in the future. So here's why I, this is so important. Now that I have all my components uh, here, I can look and say, oh, I need some more clearance from this edge to the battery there. So I'll, I, uh, because I've set this up, I know that I can just change the dimension of this one circle to something like nine, hit enter, and then watch the, not only did the joint move, but all of the features that are, uh, that are driven here are moving as well. So this is a way to really uh, fine tune the positions of all the internal components without having to jump into a sketch or jump into an individual joint, you're basically just saying, I want to modify a sketch dimension and all the things kind of adjust with it. Let's take a look here at the slide switch. Let's say I need some more, um, I need some more distance between these two. I can just change that five to let's say a seven and that pushes it that way. Very, very cool. Same thing with the feather. If I needed some more clearance from this edge, I can say I want that 2.7 to be a three and that gets pushed over there and all the features including the USB, the hole for the USB port, that is changing as well. So let me change that back to 2.7 and those small little adjustments go a long way especially when you need perfect tolerances. So uh, you apply that to basically all of the different uh, shapes and that is how you're able to fine tune the positions uh, within just one sketch. I think that's really powerful, especially for this case where I needed to, uh, you know, like every millimeter matters here. I'm trying to compress all these, uh, all these electronics into this little box. So uh, by having them all uh, tied to shapes within a shape, you're able to really have a lot of control over them. Um, so I think that's a really interesting way to, uh, to, to go about designing a, an enclosure that has several components in it. I think that's about it. Um, so let me know what you guys think. If you'd like to make uh, 
something similar. I'll give you guys uh, a link to the design itself. So you can go ahead and, and play with that and download it. If you guys are looking for um, 3D models of Adafruit parts, we do have a uh, GitHub repository with them all. So definitely check that out. Uh, I just added that motor controller, the DVR2605L, so you can get it there. You can also do part requests uh, via the uh, issues tab, so you can always use that. Or if you'd like to contribute as well, um, I'm happy to uh, merge in any changes and stuff that folks want to add. So definitely check it out. It's at github.com slash Adafruit, and you can get the cat parts there. I'll have links, of course, in the description of this video, but uh, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.